World Hijab Day. It's an event founded by Muslim activist Nazma Khan, which takes place each February 1st. It encourages women of all backgrounds to try wearing the hijab in order to experience what it's like, normalize its use, and, quote, stand for her right to cover. Those who observe it often promote the idea that the hijab is an empowering choice which does not deserve its existing stigma. Carrying this message is the popular hashtag free in hijab. Along with this event, this understanding of the hijab is growing increasingly popular in the Western world. Many non-Muslim Westerners now support the use of the hijab rather unequivocally and view any opposition to it as bigotry. Many others stand in opposition to this understanding of the hijab and to World Hijab Day, however. Countless activists all over the world are now celebrating No Hijab Day on February 1st by sharing pictures and stories of women who once wore the hijab but don't any longer. Many, if not most, women posting their own pictures and stories explain that the hijab was never a choice for them and that it was forced upon them. I'm a part of the community that embraces no hijab day and stands against the idea that hijab is a symbol of empowerment. I think I speak for this community when I say that I believe that all women should have the right to choose what they want to wear, including head coverings, without coercion. However, I think the hijab represents the antithesis of that right, and supporting it achieves the same. So, here I'd like to make the case that supporting the hijab and efforts like World Hijab Day actually hinders progress in the struggle for women's rights around the world. In order to do that, I'll dispel the premises upon which non-religious support for the hijab is based. I believe those premises to be, one, the hijab is a choice, two, the historical and ideological basis of the hijab is benign, and three, that supporting the hijab is the best way to fight for women's rights. Luckily, I won't be doing this alone, as I've enlisted the help of three incredible activists who are all former hijabis. If anyone knows this topic, it's them. Hijab is not often a choice. Hi guys, I'm Mimsy. I have a YouTube channel called Mimsy Vids. I share my thoughts and my experiences through leaving Islam to raise awareness on issues that are faced by Muslims and ex-Muslims. Hijab was a huge part of my identity as a Muslim. I wore it from the age of five years old because I went to a Muslim school and where it was part of the uniform and we were taught that a girl's beauty had to be hidden from boys. There was never any question or debate on that because it was obligatory and ordered by God. And if you didn't wear hijab, you would be tortured and burnt in hellfire. I remember being told as a little girl that there were various punishments that could be done to you in hellfire, including you hang from the strands of hair that you've shown to men, men that aren't related to you. So you'd be essentially punished for every single strand of hair that was seen. So there really isn't much choice when it comes with a threat of violent punishment. Girls that didn't wear hijab, or even girls that did wear hijab but made an effort to beautify themselves are seen as wanting that attention from men in Muslim communities. This mentality has led to a very strong slut-shaming culture. So this social stigma and religious pressure has led to many women, millions of women across the world, being forced and abused to wear the hijab. Then on top of that there are Muslim countries out there such as Iran and Saudi Arabia where it is mandatory by law to wear the hijab. So if they weren't to wear hijab, they could be punished by the government. In fact, Saudi Arabia includes the, the burqa, the full black garment, the abaya. That is also mandatory. So there are so many women who just don't have this basic human right of being able to choose how they dress. Freedom of choice is worth celebrating. But when there are millions of girls and women that are suffering because of their lack of choice and their lack of freedom when it comes to hijab, it becomes much more prevalent to spread awareness of their oppression and make change happen. Many may hear this explanation of why the hijab is so rarely a choice and think, okay, it's bad to force women to wear it, but there are still many women choosing it and embracing the true, original meaning and purpose of the hijab, which is all about empowerment. That thinking, however, is deeply flawed. The historical and ideological basis of the hijab and the culture it creates is entirely incompatible with the objective of establishing equal rights for women worldwide. The basis of the hijab. Hi guys, my name is Zara Kay and I'm a Tanzanian Australian ex-Muslim activist. I'm also the founder of Faithless Hijabi that works with ex-Muslim women on their plight from religion to reason. Here's a few reasons why I think embracing the hijab can be harmful to subjugated women. While hijab is known to be a form of covering for modesty, a lot of people fail to recognize the invention of it and the introduction of hijab. Sure, 
Head veilings existed pre-Islamic era, but the hijab was introduced by Muhammad in the 7th century to segregate Muslim women from free women, which means that the free women who did not wear the hijab were taken as slaves. Sure, the hijab exists for both men and women, however, practiced in very different forms. For men, the hijab is lowering their gaze, however, for women, it's actually covering themselves up. Which makes me think, if men are meant to lower their gaze, why are women still required to cover themselves up? Why the double standards? Why are women the ones being objectified in this case? While many Muslim women think wearing a hijab is liberating, sure, the idea or having the choice to wear any piece of clothing is liberating. However, movements that promote hijab are only detrimental to the society for those who don't have the choice of wearing a hijab. More often than ever, it is the oppressed that are always silenced. Movements like free and hijab suppresses the rights of those who disagree with the hijab and conform to the patriarchal standards of society. Embracing the hijab feeds into oppression because what is the alternative? Ostracism, physical and emotional abuse, and even hellfire? let alone countries where they stone women to death forever trying to take off their hijab or even jail them. Let's fight against this oppression. Let's not support movements like free and hijab. We should be free from hijab. How supporting World Hijab Day is harmful. Now, with an understanding of what the hijab actually is and how it's used throughout the world, it's not difficult to see why embracing the hijab with efforts like World Hijab Day is counterproductive if you want to promote women's rights. It creates the illusion that the hijab is always a choice when it very rarely is. This effectively deafens many people to the voices of women loudly exclaiming that they were or are forced to wear it. Supporting the hijab also supports the agendas of those who promote modesty culture, which places value on women based on their bodies and sexual purity, as if they're a commodity. This movement in support of the hijab hears the voices crying out for basic human rights and labels them as toxic and bigoted. It acts as if it's standing up for victims, when in reality, it's crushing them beneath its feet. It pretends to be a beacon of progress when it stands for women to have the right to cover in the West, where they already have that right, all while ignoring the millions of women who legitimately don't have the right to choose what they want to wear. This movement has it backwards. It not only fails to make progress for women's rights, but even worse, it pacifies countless good-hearted people so that despite their efforts, they're of no help to the oppressed. Since embracing the hijab creates the opposite of progress in society, we need an alternative movement which actually promotes equality. My guest hosts are some of those on the forefront of this movement, speaking for those who have had their voice taken from them, rescuing those who are in danger due to the religious beliefs of themselves or others, and encouraging more people to do the same. Media efforts like No Hijab Day are crucial and hugely effective parts of this movement as they draw attention to women everywhere who are just fighting for their rights. As a final perspective on this issue, I have one of the world's leading ex-Muslim activists to tell you why she supports No Hijab Day and why you should too. Hi, my name is Yasmin Mohammed, and I'm the founder of Free Hearts, Free Minds. If you want to learn more about me, you can go to confessionsofanexmuslim.com. I want to talk to you about why I feel so strongly about the No Hijab Day campaign. The campaign is something that I have an intimate understanding of. I know what it feels like to have the hijab forced on you at a young age, and then to not have the option of taking it off when you're older. I was born and raised in Canada, and the hijab was forced on me at the age of nine. And from that moment on, I was no longer allowed to play on the monkey bars, go swimming, ride a bike, do any of the fun things that children do that I still wanted to do. All of a sudden I was told, from now on, you have to cover yourself every inch of your body except for your face and hands, and you are to be a wrapped up clean candy as opposed to a dirty candy that is unwrapped and covered in flies and dirt. When I got older, I wanted to remove the hijab. When my family found out about this desire of mine, they threatened to kill me and then they disowned me. And that's here in Canada. So you can just imagine how much harder it is for women in countries like Saudi Arabia and Iran and other Muslim majority countries. Women in Iran can be arrested for removing their hijabs and the same for women in Saudi Arabia. They can be abused by their families. They can actually even be killed. Not just in Muslim majority countries either. In my country here of Canada, a young girl named Aksa Parvez was 16 years old and she was strangled to death by her father because she refused to wear the hijab. 
So I understand what it feels like for these women who want to remove the hijab, but who are absolutely crushed under the pressure of their societies, their governments, their families, their communities to keep the hijab on their heads against their will. And that's what No Hijab Day is all about. It's to talk about that problem. It's to address that issue. It's to talk about these women that are not free to make those decisions. They are not free to even decide what they want to wear on their bodies. So on this day, I would like to celebrate the women that are fighting against the hijab. I'd like to support them. And I'd like them to know that we hear them, we see them, we cheer them on in their fight for freedom. I have no doubt that many Westerners who are sympathetic to those who embrace the hijab with efforts like World Hijab Day do so out of compassion. While that compassion is admirable and very much needed, such sympathies are misplaced. If you've supported efforts like these, I hope this video has illuminated the reasons why you shouldn't. Your compassion is needed by women all over the world who struggle daily against the forces of oppression we've discussed here. Please help us create a world where women can truly be free. A world free from hijab. Thanks for watching. If you want to help spread our message, please share this video or the content of any of my guest hosts, Mimsy Vids, Zara Kay, and Yasmin Mohammed, and use the hashtags No Hijab Day and Free From Hijab. Those of us who can speak out should, as far too many who want to speak out can't. I've been Drew of Genetically Modified Skeptic. Until next time, everyone, stay skeptical.